AP artists, we're going to talk about how to photograph your works so that you can submit them to the AP Studio Art web application through your instructor. So first of all, where? Uh, this location is great because it's got passive lighting coming in from the outside. Passive lighting means we're not going to shoot this in the morning when we've got direct sunlight hitting our um, art. We never want direct sunlight hitting our art because it will make it bad. Best days would be kind of gray cloudy days or in the afternoon after the sun's gone over the top of the building when we have this diffused natural light coming in the window. Okay. Next thing we're going to talk about is framing this up and how, um, how to shoot it. From over there, I want you to just notice, if I angle my camera up or down like this, I would be creating a skewed image, one that is wider at the top or the bottom because of the angle of my camera. So that flat uh, camera angle is very important. Whether you're using a phone or an actual camera, it means you need to center yourself directly over the image and then we're going to take time to scale this to our uh, camera as best we can to be centered and not skewed. Okay? So the camera is going to move in and actually do an over the shoulder shot here. I'm going to open up my camera function and you're going to be able to see through my camera the artwork. So initially that skew that I'm talking about, this would be really bad if we shot it like this. And that's an extreme example, you're probably not going to do that. But to really pay attention to finding the center, take your time to move over the artwork and watch the corners of the camera frame until you get everything to be proportional and equal. So I'm making very slight adjustments right now until I get perfect proportions here. Looks like I need to move in a little bit more. I'm getting really good proportions right there. And now I'd be ready to take the picture. Move in a little closer. Still waiting. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. Now, looking through these, that would work. That one would work. There we go. That one would work. They are all good good enough. This one's got a little bit of angle, angle to it, but they're actually right on. Now you saw how long it took me to do that. Once you get the one that you want, this one's skewed on the bottom a little bit. Let's go with this one looks like the winner. You can send that to yourself in a number of ways. You can either mail it to yourself, which is probably the guarantee, or you can airdrop it. If you have an iPhone, you can airdrop the full size image to your computer. So if I click airdrop right now, Let's just see if anybody shows up. Go. May not. Looks like a pretty weak wireless signal. I'll go for mail. I'm going to send it from my personal account to my school account. Try J first. It's difficult to do when it's not right in front of me. There we go. I'm going to go to my G apps account. Right there, subject, uh, AP photo, and that's it. I'm going to hit send and it's going to give me one other option. It's going to say, what size do you want to send this? And can you see that? Mm -hmm. There you go. Is it focusing? Looks pretty good. I want to send it actual size to start. I always start big. We don't want to resize on our phone. So that just emailed to me. Part two of this is going to be a uh, screen recording on what we do once we get it on our computer and how we proportion it before we submit it to the instructor. Okay, AP artists, we are in our GApps email here. My photo came through as AP Photo. I'm going to open that and download it to my downloads folder. And I can leave it in that folder. Next step would be to open up Adobe Photoshop, which you should have on your computer. We're going to use Photoshop to convert the resolution into the required specifications. So Photoshop's open. Uh, go away. There we go. I'm going to go under File and choose Open. And I'm going to browse to my Downloads, which is normally where all of your downloads should go, your Downloads folder. And here is my Studio Art image. I can hit the space bar just to preview it. I do have a little bit of skew going on there. Uh, you can see across the top now as we open it up bigger. I really probably can't fix that in Photoshop. Um, maybe I can use the skew tool, but you may want to reshoot. 
For the sake of the demonstration, I'm going to continue on though. We're going to open that up. And what we need to do from here is, is resize the resolution. So in Photoshop, we go under image, go to image size, and we're going to get its native resolution. Now it's, um, it's big. It is at 72 PPI, it's a 34 by 45 inch um, canvas. This thing right here means it keeps the height and width proportional. So if you change one number, you don't have to change the other. That is what the constrained proportions thing does. If I take that off, I could change one without changing the other, and then it's going to m make fat faces or skinny faces. It's basically going to mess up the proportions. So we want these to be checked. We also want the resample image to be checked. All we're going to do is drop this number down into the range of the pixel width. Now, what is that range? The maximum and minimum. Minimum is a 480 by 480. Maximum is a 530 by 780. And that should be length by width. So let's just change this. Go back to Photoshop. Go away. There we go. Let's change that to 530. Our bottom number is 707. That's within the range, so that's good. We're going to click OK, and it's going to resample it. Now, some of you might ask, well, what did it actually do? Well, I'm going to undo once, and we're going to zoom way in on this. And if we look at the detail of this, we can actually start to see, we're seeing the canvas there. Now we're seeing the individual pixels. Those are the actual individual pixels of color. Okay, if I do that resize, redo image size, and now I zoom in, you'll notice those actual pixels show up right here. And when we go way in, like we were before when we were on the teeth, they're, they're a lot bigger chunks, if you will. Okay, so it's just a lower resolution. But this means when they look at it on the internet or the web, it's going to look like this good, which is totally fine. It's what they want. It fits the screen on a computer. It's what they want. So last step is to save that. And we're going to do save for web because we can make it a JPEG format right away. And I'm not sure if we can do color. Yeah, convert to, I don't know if we should do that. Probably should have figured that out before. Um, let me check to see if the color mode is RGB. Yes, the mode, this is one other thing we should check. So under image, mode, it's already RGB color, which is good. You could just change that from CMYK to RGB if it came in different. Anyway, sorry. File, save for web. Uh, we're going to save it as a JPEG. It's going to be 301 kilobytes, which is under one megabyte, which is what they're asking for. The width and height are within proportions. And this is like a preview right here. I'm going to click save. It's, oh, by the way, maximum settings is good for, the, for what we exported. Save, and then it's going to ask me, where do you want it to go? And I need to put it somewhere where I can find it. I should also name it something that I can find it. So I don't know if there's any name requirements. But let's do um, Hallie Strawberry um, AP Studio Art Portfolio 1 dot JPEG. And I'll put it back into my pictures folder. Let's make a folder in there. AP Studio. Portfolio. Create. Save. All right, so that's saved here. I would go to my finder in order to see it. And if I want to email it to my instructor, I could attach that to an email, uh, navigate to it and attach it to an email. That is pretty much everything you should need to know for shooting your photos and um, converting the resolution so that it's acceptable for the, the portfolio. The end? The end.